King of the Mountain. It's King of the Mountain tournament number five, qualifying race one. El Jefe is driving in Black Diamond. Black Diamond is a 65 Mustang Fastback weighing 91.4 grams. It may be black, but that ain't no diamond. Maybe a diamond in the rough. Nope, it's just a Mustang. Then we have the broker driving in 24 Carat. 24 Carat is a Ford Mustang Mach 1 weighing 85.6 grams. Is that blood on the front of that car? It's probably just paint, hopefully. I don't know. Let's just move on to the next driver. We've got T.L. Jr. driving in Crazy Stang. Crazy Stang is a 92 Ford Mustang weighing 107.2 grams. Crazy Stang, that's a pretty good name because you would have to be crazy to drive a Mustang. Again, the Mustang is a very popular car. And last up, we have Dos Bros Racing driving in Paddington. Paddington is a 2010 Ford Shelby GT500 Super Snake weighing 65 grams. I don't understand the car name Paddington. Maybe he has a lot of padding in that car in anticipation for his inevitable wreck. Okay, okay, here we go. Four drivers, four races. The top driver in points will advance on to King of the Mountain tournament number five. Now for this fifth tournament, we're gonna have 11 qualifying races, but there are only eight spots in the tournament. The top seven qualifiers will automatically get into the tournament. The bottom four will compete in an additional qualifying race to determine who will take that last and eighth spot. So fast times are very important here. Whoa, what happened back there? Oh man, this is exactly what I expected from this race. If you put four Mustangs on the track, an outcome like this is inevitable. There's a Mustang going backwards. There's one off the track on its side. And then we have a Mustang upside down on its roof. There really couldn't have been any other outcome but this. Well, let's just say that was a rocky start for the Mustangs. That's an understatement. Look at this pass by T.L. Jr. in the silver 92 Mustang. He holds that outside line to overtake El Jefe. T.L. Jr. showing El Jefe who's the boss. Let's see what happened to the broker. The broker is such a fitting name here. Emphasis on broke. It appears that El Jefe pushed him off the track. He kind of cut him off and then the broker drove on top of his car. While they clean up this mess, let's have a word from our sponsor. This race is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. One, okay, two, hold on. three, hit it. Wait a minute. I got that Ridge on me. Hold on, wait up. Put your wallet up. Come on, man, you're messing up the flow. I'm sorry, but Susan asked if we could just do a straightforward ad. Okay, so different timing? No, not that. It's just the Ridge is such a great wallet, it doesn't need the song and dance to sell it. Okay, well, I had a whole band here and everything, I know, so. I know. Maybe you guys could play something after the show. Well, I'm not sure what to do now, so you go ahead and do it. Oh, sure. Yeah, uh, the Ridge is a great wallet to have in your pocket. It's compact, sleek, and holds up to 12 cards plus cash. Holds 12 cards plus cash. 2D. That's just Bobby on the base. Don't worry about okay, it. Okay, that's a little distracting. Just keep though. going. You're fine. Okay, where was I? It's durable, made from quality materials, and that's why each Ridge wallet has a lifetime, lifetime warranty. warranty. Okay, come on. You heard him, guys. Come on. I didn't mean come on with Gotta the Gotta get that Ridge. Fine. Hey! Wallet. You need that Ridge? To get the Ridge Wallet, head on over to ridge.com forward slash 3 d botmaker and use the promo code 3 d botmaker at checkout to save 10% off uh -huh. your order. 10% off, let's take it to the Ridge. You need to go to that ridge.com. Susan, if you're watching, I tried. That was great, guys. Take five. Here we go with race two. The broker out in front in the gold Mustang, Dos Bros Racing in second place. T.L. Jr. on the tail of Dos Bros Racing. Everyone should get out of the way of that gold Mustang. Boom, he gets hit from behind. We don't want any more hit and runs. And the broker takes the win on race two with a track time of 18.40 seconds. T.L. Jr. takes second place, followed by Dos Bros Racing and El Jefe. I gotta say, I am surprised to see all four cars make it down to the finish line. I did not expect to see that. Here's that exchange between the broker and T.L. Jr. T.L. Jr. was able to overtake Dos Bros Racing to take second, but he could not find a way around the broker. And here we go with race three. Dos Bros Racing on the front right, T.L. Jr. on the front left. Here they come down the first straight, T.L. Jr. taking the early lead. That 92 Fox body Mustang outperforming all the other models. Well, these are Mustangs, so the bar is kind of low here. T.L. with some understeering out of turn two, he corrects it. All alone through turn three. And this one is over. T.L. Jr. takes his second win of the night. He gets a track time of 18.392 seconds. That will put his score up at 13. That means this race is over and done, but we will still run the last race because remember, the qualifying track time is very important in this tournament. Only the top seven are guaranteed a spot 
in the tournament. The broker gets rolled in turn two. You know, it's probably not a good idea to spray paint your windshield like that. Here we go, the fourth and final race. TL Jr. is the one qualifying tonight. The question is, can he improve on that 18 second time? 18 seconds is probably not where he wants to be. 17 would be a lot safer, 16 even better. He's looking good so far, he's all by himself. These are ideal conditions for him setting a qualifying time. He's looking good, let's see how he handles turn three. TL Jr. flying through turn three, straight to the finish line. And he does improve his time, 17. 0.280 seconds. That's a great time, actually. Wow, way to get it done, TL Jr. I gotta say, I am genuinely impressed to get a time like that driving in a Mustang is like driving with one arm behind your back. Imagine the time he could have got if he was in a real car. Oh man, we haven't even started the Mustang tournament and you're all ready. Well, what do you expect? You lined up four Mustangs for tonight's race. I just thought maybe you're gonna ease into it, you oh, know? Oh no, I am ready. And there you have it, TL Jr., our first qualifier in the Crazy Stang. He qualifies with a time of 17.280 seconds. It's King of Mountain Tournament number five, qualifying race two. We have returning driver, Lady of Speed, driving in Buttercup. Buttercup is a Ferrari F12 Berlinetta weighing 82.7 grams. Lady of Speed, a fan favorite from the last tournament. Surprisingly, she got knocked out in the first round. Then we have Pablo driving in the Queen. The Queen is an Aston Martin DBS weighing 70.4 grams. Is that the model Lady of Speed was driving in the last tournament? I think she was in a 177. Well, it was fast. We'll see how this one does. Then we have another returning driver, Speedzilla, driving in Venom. Venom is a 2013 Dodge SRT Viper weighing 77.9 grams. That's two returning drivers and we got one more. It's Scorpio Love Smith driving in Green Beam. The Green Beam is a 2016 BMW M2 weighing 80.5 grams. As usual, the drivers will compete in four races. The top driver in points will advance on to King of the Mountain Tournament number four. Also keep in mind, only the top seven qualifiers are guaranteed a spot in the tournament. So track times are very important here. There goes the Lady of Speed in that Ferrari. She was one of the fastest qualifiers in tournament number four. Looking good so far here, a little trouble coming out of that turn. Speedzilla right on her tail. And Lady of Speed takes the win on race one with an impressive track time, 16.572. There we go, now that's a fast time, much better over the Mustangs we had last week. Scorpio Love Smith having some trouble getting stuck coming out of turn one. A close race between Lady of Speed in the yellow Ferrari and Speedzilla in the blue Viper. Both drivers were qualifiers in the last tournament. Here we go with race two, Pablo in the red car, Scorpio Love Smith in the green BMW pulling away from the pack. Scorpio trying to make up for that DNF. Speedzilla is right on this bumper, Pablo falling behind, here they come down McClyde straight into the last corner. Scorpio's looking good out there. Speedzilla not giving up, it's a tight race to the finish. Scorpio's gonna take that one, Speedzilla comes in second again. Lady of Speed comes in third, she's still in first place in points with seven. Speedzilla has six, Scorpio has five, Pablo has three. That was some good clean racing and another fast track time. Yeah, Scorpio got a 16.746 second track time. Way faster than the Mustang from last week. Hey, the qualifier from last week had a 17.2 second track time. That's pretty good. Well, we certainly see him worse. Plus, three of these drivers are returning drivers. Two of them were qualifiers for the last tournament. So this is not their first time on the mountain. I still blame the Mustangs. Of course you do. Here we go with race three. Scorpio Love Smith and Speedzilla will be leading us down. Speedzilla out in front, followed by Lady of Speed. It's a close one into the open track. Lady of Speed with a hard block on Scorpio. Speedzilla still in first as he approaches the final turn. It's a close one. And here they come, single file to the finish line. Speedzilla, Lady of Speed, Scorpio Love Smith. Another 16 second track time and look who decided to show up. Oh, here comes Pablo. Pablo finishing backwards, but that's not very impressive when you're in last place. He was so slow that might as well have been a DNF. Speedzilla will take the first place spot with that win. That puts him at 11 points, one point over Lady of Speed who has 10. Both drivers will be starting in the front row on this last and final race. This should be a good one, Speedzilla on the front right in the blue Viper, Lady of Speed in the yellow Ferrari. Here we go. Speedzilla with a slight lead down the first straight, he has an inside lane advantage. Scorpio right behind him. Lady of Speed now in second. Some contact on turn two. They're sliding. There's one more corner to go. Can Lady of Speed catch up to Speedzilla? Here they come. No, she cannot. 
That means Speedzilla will be advancing on to King of the Mountain Tournament number five. Man, that was a good race right there. It really was. Each race with a 16 second track time, that's the kind of racing I expect for modified cars. I know the Lady of Speed fans are gonna be disappointed with that one. Maybe next time, Lady of Speed. Maybe next time. Speedzilla, your current number one qualifier with a track time of 16.714 seconds. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number five, qualifying race three. First up, we have Johnny Reaper driving in Last Breath. Last Breath is a Camaro Z28 weighing 71.9 grams. Then we have Golf Rainer driving in Focal Point. The Focal Point is an 08 Ford Focus weighing 88.7 grams. I see what you did there. Focal Point, Ford Focus. It's a pretty nice car for a Ford. Well, if you like Fords, you'll like the next one. Let me guess, a Mustang. We've got Sally driving in Mustang. Sally, wait a minute, that is not Sally. Did you think you were the only one who named your Mustang Sally? Sally is specifically a scarlet red car. I don't know what this imposter is and what's that on the window? Maybe they got broken into. Who wants to break into that thing? And finally, we have Eddie driving in Splatter Gasser. The Splatter Gasser is a 64 Chevy Nova Gasser weighing 70.8 grams. That's a cool paint job. Yes, it is. As usual, the drivers will compete in four races. The top driver in points will advance on to King of the Mountain tournament number five. Well, I know who I'm not cheering for and it has nothing to do with the fact that it's a Mustang. Mustang Sally is a fake and an imposter. Okay, but Sally is a common name. That is not a real Mustang Sally. Golf Rainer in the lead in the orange Ford Focus. Johnny Reaper in second in the black Camaro. Golf Rainer looks fast. He's approaching the final turn. Golf Rainer with a good sized lead here and he will take the win on race one. Ooh. Oh my, whoa. What in the world happened? Sally's car just blew up. Where's Sally? I'm not sure, but that is not good. Wow. Get the safety team out there right away. This might not be the best time to bring this up. Yeah, call the paramedics too. I said it before and I'll say it again, and this proves what it. What are you talking about now? That car is an imposter. Really? It is not Mustang Sally. A car just split in half. We don't know where the driver is. And you want to talk about Mustang Sally conspiracies. It's not a conspiracy. I know a little something about Mustangs. So now you're a Mustang expert. Not an expert. Did they find the driver? But that is clearly some other vehicle with a Mustang body shell put on top of it and they're trying to pass it off as Mustang Sally. The driver of the Mustang- Not a Mustang. Is still yet to be found. Sally would not break like that. And the drivers are off for race two. We've got Golf Raynard on the front right and Eddie on the front left. Eddie with a DNF in the last race falling over on turn two. Johnny Reaper in the black car behind Golf Raynard. Here comes Eddie and Sally. Oh, and they're both over. Double wipeout. That leaves Golf Raynard and Johnny Reaper. Golf Raynard takes his second win in a row with another 16 second track time. This time he gets 16.826 seconds. That will be Eddie's second DNF in a row. That will also be Imposter Sally's second crash in a row, which is expected for Mustangs but that right there is no Mustang. Do you think Sally might be crashing on purpose to sell the illusion that it's a Mustang? They might be, but they're not getting past old 2D with that one. I know Mustang when I see one. Okay, folks, well, you heard it here first. 2D, the authority on oh, what on. is and what is not a Mustang. That's not fair. You saw the top come off that car. That was not a Mustang under that shell. Here we go with race three. Eddie on the front right in the splatter gasser. Sally on the front left in the Mustang with an asterisk. Hashtag not a Stang. Oh, namaste to you as well. Eddie in the front makes it past turn two for the first time. Can he finish? Oh, oh, oh no, he oh. cannot. Eddie wipes out and Golf Raider will oh, take oh, it. again. What is going okay, on? Okay, look at that. Look at that right there. What in the world is that? Okay, I see what you're talking about now. That doesn't even look like a car underneath. And I don't see the driver either. It could be some type of unmanned self-driving car. Is that even allowed? Um, let me check. Uh, can you call Susan? It doesn't seem like it should be allowed. I'm not sure if we put that in the rules or not. Well, whoever made it did a pretty poor job with the AI. It seems they programmed it to steer right at the intersection. Let's see that crash again. Boom. See, I told you something was up. Mustangs are bad, but not that bad. Well, I stand corrected. You were right. That is clearly not a real Mustang. But Susan is saying we don't have any rules against driverless cars. Well, we need to add that rule. So I guess Sally will get to ride Sally one more time. Oh, uh, get that thing out of here. Let's go back to the score. Golf Rainer, three wins in a row. If he wins one more, it will be the first perfect score for King of the Mountain tournament number five. Well, I'm cheering for Golf Rainer then. He has a seven point lead going into this last race, so he will be advancing on to the tournament. Here they go for the final race. Johnny Reaper with a slight lead. Golf Rainer right on his tail. Here they come to the open track. 
Golf Ranger waiting for an opportunity to pass. He's right on him. Johnny Reaper not slowing down. They're through the final turn. Johnny Reaper takes the win on the last race. Golf Rainer comes so close to getting a perfect score. And good riddance to that imposter of a Mustang. May we never see it again on the track. There's Eddie who technically did get a perfect score. Four crashes in a row. Luckily for him, his poor driving was overshadowed by the other car breaking in half two times. Golf Rainer currently qualifies in second place with a track time of 16.702 seconds. <laughs> It's King of the Mountain Tournament number five, qualifying race four. First up is the Max Man driving in, Danger Caddy. The Danger Caddy is a Cadillac V16 concept weighing 76 grams. Then it's Paul Gibson driving in, CZ4A. It's a 2008 Lancer Evolution weighing 104.8 grams. Whoa, whoa, what happened with that paint job? They may have had a malfunction in the spray booth. And they just sent it in like that. Yep, just like that. Well, at least Trey knows how to drive in style. He's driving in Beverly. Beverly is a 95 Mazda RX-7 weighing 68.8 grams. See that right there? That's a nice clean paint job. That's the way you should roll up to King of the Mountain. I totally agree with you. Not like that Evo. Oh my goodness, what the heck is this? Just read the name. We're really scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Leaf R12 is driving in the Pink Panther. The Pink Panther is another Cadillac V16 concept. This one weighs 94.1 grams. What did they do to that poor car? Maybe they're trying to make it look like a, a Pink Panther. Have you seen the Pink Panther? He does not look like whatever that thing is. I don't know, let's just get this race going. The drivers are at the start and they're off for the first of four races. The top driver in points will advance on to King of the Mountain Tournament number five. The Max Man way out in front of everyone else. I expected to see that Evo in the lead. The Max Man is flying down the track. That car is straight, stable, headed right to the finish line, and the Max Man will take the win on race one. Look at that track time, 16.902 seconds. That was a solid run by Max Man. Paul Gibson will take second place in the Evo. I am actively rooting against Paul Gibson and Lee Far 12 on the basis of them having a terrible paint job. Here they go down the track for race two, Paul Gibson and Leaf R12 in the front row. Quite possibly two of the worst paint jobs in King of the Mountain history. I don't know about that. How can Paul Gibson even see the road? Maybe he has a good GPS system. That car is an abomination to the Evo brand. Well, he may not look great, but he's doing well in this race. Paul Gibson will bring it past the finish line for the win with an 18.458 second time. That will tie Paul Gibson's score with Max Man. Both drivers have eight with two races to go. Trey and Leaf R12 are also tied. They both have three. The Max Man trying to get around Paul Gibson, but gets blocked on turn two. He should be disqualified for that paint job. Well, it was in the rules. I thought so. But we were a little lenient on that rule this year. Leniency is the path to the dark side. Well, the next time around, we're going to definitely enforce the car appearance rule. Well, that's good to hear. All we can hope for now is that Paul Gibson crashes or something like that. Okay, we're not wishing harm on any of our drivers. We could. We're not. This time, Trey is in the lead in the blue RX-7. Go, Trey, go. Here comes Max Man looking to pass. Trey blocks him, and he blocks him again. Nice defensive maneuver there. Here comes Trey around the final corner, followed by Max Man, and Trey takes the win on race three. Trey gets an 18.702 second track time. That will bring his score up to eight. The Max Man still in the lead by one point over Paul Gibson. Leaf R12 only has four points, so it's over for the Pink Panther. Well, that's good news. Some nice driving by Trey blocks Max Man going into that turn. That's an effective strategy we've seen before on this track. Slow your opponent down into two, then build up that lead down McClyde Street. One race left. One point is separating the Max Man and Paul Gibson. The Max Man starting in the front row, Paul Gibson right behind him. Come on, Max Man, you're our only hope. The drivers are all lined up, and here they go down the track for the final race. The visual integrity of King of the Mountain Tournament number five on the line here in this race. The Max Man is already way out ahead. The Max Man is looking good. He flies out of turn two, he is smoking. Oh yeah, this one is over. Here he goes through turn three, straight to the finish line, and the Max Man yeah, baby. will be advancing on to King of the Mountain Tournament number five. The Max Man is the man. A great time there too, 16.680 seconds. Here's the qualifier so far, and that will put Max Man at the top. He's currently sitting in first place with that track time. The Max Man was letting everyone know that Danger Caddy is to be feared. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number five, qualifying race five. First up, we have Frank Klein driving in, Triggered. Triggered is a Toyota Supra weighing 112.6 grams. Then 
we have Hey Hey driving in the Daily Driver. The Daily Driver, a popular choice here in King of the Mountain. It's an 08 Lancer Evolution weighing 108.7 grams. Next, we have Pete Sloan driving in Lucky's Revenge. Lucky's Revenge is a 71 Plymouth GTX weighing 102.4 grams. And finally, we have Kyle B driving in the AMX. The AMX is an AMC Javelin AMX weighing 79.8 grams. It appears we have another American versus JDM battle on our hands. It certainly does. The drivers will compete in four races. The top driver in points will advance on to King of the Mountain tournament number five. They're at the start, and here we go for the first race. Frank Klein already making a clear distinction between him and all the other drivers. Wow, he is gone. This may not even be a race today. Just Frank Klein doing practice laps. He is almost a full straight ahead of everyone else. Frank Klein around the last corner of this has got to be a fast time. Let's see. Yes, it is, and that is a new tournament track record, 16.376 seconds. The previous record set by Lady of Speed was 16.572. You know, it's got to suck when you finally get to King of the Mountain, and you realize you're driving against Frank Klein in the qualifying round. Yeah, Frank Klein, a.k.a. Red Pill Racing, is certainly known for speed. He's making a statement right up front in the first race. He is here to win. That was great, guys. Take five. Here we go with race two. Hey, hey, in the silver Evo, Kyle B in the blue AMX. Frank Klein appears to be pushing that Evo down the track. He is right on Hey, hey's bumper. Let's see if Frank Klein makes a move. Here they go, round turn two. Frank Klein not laying up. It's a close race into the final corner. This is a good one here. Hey, hey, with the block, and Hey, hey will take the win. Frank Klein right on his tail. A 17.648 second time. A hit from Pete Sloan. And another hit from Kyle B. The American car is teaming up on that Toyota Supra. Hey, sometimes you have to weaken your opponent. Not in racing. King of the Mountain is no holds barred. That's not true. We have rules and regulations. We just don't have anything against hitting other drivers. Exactly. No holds barred. We do not condone or encourage violence on the track. But it's good for ratings. That is true. Here we go with race three. Frank Klein and Hey Hey are both tied with eight points. Pete Sloan and Kyle B have three. Sloan and Kyle B starting in the front row on this race. They both need a win here to stay alive. Here they go down the first straight. Pete Sloan getting a push from Frank Klein. Frank Klein very generous tonight. Nice to see him helping out the slower drivers. Yeah, Frank Klein truly a class act out there. Even helping Pete Sloan around that corner. I did not expect to see Pete Sloan winning a race. Just look at the wheel wobble. That's what they call the death wobble. And yet he still gets a time of 17.866 seconds. He has Frank Klein to thank for that. Another collision in the intersection and again Kyle B with a late hit on Frank Klein. I'm sensing a sore loser on the track. Frank Klein now has 11 points. Hey Hey has nine. Pete Sloan has eight. Kyle B has five. Here's another look at the assist by Frank Klein, helping out Pete Sloan. They say nice guys finish last, but I think this race proves the opposite. Frank Klein has helped two drivers win a race, and he's still winning in points. Well, this just flies in the face of everyone who complains about having to start behind a slow driver. If the car in front of you is slow, push them down the track. Or even better, push them off the track. No, we do not want that to happen. A wise man once said, all is fair in love and diecast racing. A wise man did not say that. You said that. I could be a wise guy. Here we go. Final race. Frank Klein in the front row. He's starting off again with a nice lead here. Frank is pretty much racing against himself right now. None of these other drivers have the speed to keep up with Frank Klein's Supra. He is just flying down the track full speed. This looks a little too fast. Too fast, too furious. Here comes Frank Klein to take the win. And we've got a new track time record. 15.912 seconds. Wow. Hot damn, Frank Klein is the man. That is the first sub 16 second track time of this tournament. Not only that, he actually beat the fastest qualifying time of the last tournament as well. So he's faster than a lady of speed. Yes, he is. Frank Klein is the new number one qualifier. 15.912 second qualifying time. I cannot wait to see what he does in the tournament. The other drivers have to be a little triggered after that run. King of the Mountain Tournament number five, qualifying race six. Chloe K is driving in Insurgent. Insurgent is a Pontiac Rages weighing 115 grams. Is it me or is there something not right about that car? Well, there's a hole in the top. And a dent. I don't know, just move on to the next car. Up next is Little Deb driving in U812. I didn't have anything to eat. No, U812. No, I didn't. It's the name of the car, 3D. Oh. Well, U812 is a 69 Chevelle weighing 105.1 grams. It was a little Debbie joke. Come on. We've got Rob Block driving in Turbo Brick. Turbo Brick is a Volvo 850 Estate weighing 88.9 grams. 
nice to see Rob Lock back on the track again. Welcome back, Rob Lock. Welcome back. I missed him. And last up is the Estonian racer driving in another Evo. Another Evo. Yep, another Evo. Well, we've got another Evo. This one weighs 67.8 grams. As usual, the drivers will compete in four races. The top driver in points will win. Also, keep in mind, only the top seven qualifiers are guaranteed a spot in the tournament. The drivers who qualify between 8th place and 11th will have to compete in an additional qualifying race. If you want to guarantee your spot, get a fast time. Chloe K with the lead looks like she's trying to get a fast time here in that Pontiac Rages. First time seeing that oh. car on the channel. Oh, and we just lost another, another Evo. Evo. Well, we've had so many Evos in King of the Mountain, I don't think anyone will miss that one if it doesn't qualify. Surprisingly, we don't have an Evo qualified for this tournament yet. Well, the King of the Mountain is already an Evo. Do we need another one? Hey, it's a good car. Rob Lock gets stuck, the Estonian racer upside down on turn two. Let's see what happened there. Having some trouble up on the side of the track, and he flipped over going into the turn. Here we go with race two. Little Deb out in front, followed by Chloe K. The proportions on that Chevelle do not seem quite right. It is the little car getting pushed around by that Evo and by the Pontiac. Chloe K in front, oh. Little Deb is over. But look at the Estonian racer with the pass on the inside. There goes another Evo. And the Estonian racer steals the win from Chloe K. That will move the Estonian racer up to second place with five points. Chloe K still has the lead with eight points. And it's a DNF for Little Deb and Rob Locke. What happened to Rob Locke? Looks like that turbo brick ran into Little Deb's car. But pay attention right here to the Evo on the inside, boxing out Chloe K around that corner. And just like that, the Estonian racer is back in this race. Back in, but still three points behind Chloe K. The Estonian racer will be starting on the inside lane in the front row on this next race. Rob Locke in the red Volvo on the front left. So far, that is two DNFs for Rob Locke. Let's see if he can make it three. And here they go down the track for race three. It's a close race going into the first corner. Estonian racer with a slight lead. Rob Locke not far behind. Here they go into turn two. The Estonian racer getting some distance now. That's just another Evo doing what Evos do. A tight race between Rob Locke and Chloe K. Chloe K will take second place, but they were door to door around that corner. And right there is another win for another Evo driven by the Estonian racer. Yes, the Estonian racer is only one point behind Chloe K now. Chloe K has 11, the Estonian racer has 10. Little Deb only has three, Rob Lock has two, so they are out of the running for this race. So it all comes down to Chloe K and the Estonian racer. Chloe K with the advantage, she's starting in the front row. The Estonian racer in the back row and behind Rob Lock. Behind Rob Lock is pretty much the worst position you could start in. It's certainly not an advantage. Chloe K with a nice lead going into the first turn. That lead only getting bigger now. It's already over. Whoa! Chloe K rolls off the road! I didn't mean over like that. Rob Lock now has a big lead here. He doesn't have enough points to win it. The Estonian racer is behind him. Here he comes past the finish line. The Estonian racer takes second place. That will give him three points. That means the Estonian racer Whoa. will be advancing on to the tournament. What an upset for Chloe K. She was leading in points. She had the advantage on that last race, but something just went terribly wrong with that car right here. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. She swerves to the right, then to the left, flips it onto the grass, then into that light post. I think I understand now why that car has dents on the roof. I think she just added a few more with that roll. Here's the qualifier so far. The Estonian racer qualifies currently in sixth place. It's King of the Mountain tournament number five, qualifying race seven. We've got the League of Speed driving in, and Fuego. I already know you're a fan of this car. Oh yeah, the almighty Fiero. That's right, and Fuego is a Pontiac Fiero 2M4, weighing 95.2 grams. It's about time we had a Fiero in King of the Mountain. Then we have Orlando, Florida man driving in, Shop Car. The Shop Car is a custom Datsun 240Z, weighing 82 grams. He could have got that thing washed before the race. Well, it's a Shop Car. You can't wash a Shop Car? You could. Well, then he should have washed it. Then we have Hames Junt driving in Graphiter. The Graphiter is an Audi RS6 Avant weighing 91.1 grams. Something strange about that name, Hames Junt. You never heard of the Junt family? No. Me neither. And last up, we have Robin Darling driving in Redemption. Redemption is a 1970 Chevy Chevelle weighing 92.2 grams. As usual for King of the Mountain, the drivers will compete in four races, rotating the starting position between each race. League of Speed will be starting off in the front right in the orange Fiero. 
Orlando, Florida man on the front left. Well, I think you already know who I'm cheering for. The Fiero, of course. Absolutely. One of the finest American cars ever to come out of Italy. League of Speed already way ahead of the rest of the pack as he approaches turn two. Florida man in second place, followed by Robin Darling. Look at that Fiero go. League of Speed, the only driver in sight right now as he takes the first win with a track time of 16.808 seconds. Uh, there were four cars, right? What happened? There they are. We oh, got to pile up on turn three. Wow. Orlando, Florida man and Hames Junt on their sides. Robin Darling stuck in the middle. Let's go to the replay. They look fine right here. Hames Junt gets into the back end of Orlando, Florida man, and then they all went over. What a mess. While they clean that mess up, this race is brought to you by the 3D Bot Maker Merch Store. Support the channel and look good doing it at the 3D Bot Maker Merch Store. There's t-shirts, hoodies, decals, even coffee mugs. And we just got that brand new Big Air Dillon Winter Rally design. A big thanks to each and every one of you who helped support this channel. Yes, and a big shout out to all the channel members. Absolutely, you all make this possible and we appreciate each and every one of you. Here we go with race two, Orlando, Florida man in the front right. Robin Darling on the front left. Robin pulling ahead into the first corner. League of Speed and the Fiero stuck behind that slow, slow Dotson. Robin Darling with a strong lead through two. But here comes League of Speed now in second. That's what I'm talking about. That's the power of the Fiero. Robin Darling grows that lead back. And this race will go to Robin Darling, followed by League of Speed. Ooh. Whoa. Come on, be careful with that Fiero. A little fender bender at the intersection. I hope that car's okay. That win will put Robin Darling in second place on the scoreboard. Three points behind League of Speed, who has eight. Robin hits the curb, and then look at League of Speed. That looked like a direct hit by League of Speed. It kind of did. The lane was completely open. I don't know how he could not see that car, so that seems pretty intentional to me. I'm guessing League of Speed doesn't like losing. Well, nobody likes losing, but you don't go smash the front end of your Fiero over a loss. Probably not a smart move in a car called En Fuego. Exactly. We already lost one Fiero on this channel. We don't need to lose another. This time we have Robin Darling and Hames Junt in the front row. Robin with a slight lead here. League of Speed right on the tail of Hames Junt. They're all bunched up going into the corner. A lot of paint swapping there. Robin Darling now way ahead of the rest of the field. Come on, Fiero. It's a close race for second. League of Speed pulls ahead. What a pass. And Robin Darling will take first, followed by League of Speed. Hames Junt and Orlando, Florida man in fourth. All right, League of Speed in the Fiero is still on top, although only by one point. We got to see that pass again. Keep your eye on the orange Fiero passing on the inside of that corner. A nice move by League of Speed. That pass right there kept him in the lead in points. This is it. Race four. League of Speed has 11 points. Robin Darling has 10. League of Speed in the orange Fiero starting on the front left. Robin Darling in the rear on the right. Come on, League of Speed. You got this. A good start so far for League of Speed. He's leading into turn one. Hames Junt in the Audi in second. There we go. Just stay on the track. Robin Darling trying to get around Hames Junt. The Fiero way ahead now. Here comes League of Speed through the final corner. Oh, this is over. Look at that. And League of Speed takes the win qualifying for King of the Mountain tournament number five. Once again, the Fiero, the great and mighty Fiero, reigns supreme on the racetrack. Looks like everyone else got stuck behind Hames Junt. I still think there's something off about that name. Let's look at the qualifying board. League of Speed currently qualifies in fifth place. Only the top seven qualifying times are guaranteed a spot in the tournament. With four more qualifiers, he's not quite safe yet. Hey, he's got a Fiero, he can't lose. King of the Mountain Tournament number five, qualifying race eight. Christopher Kampala is driving in Red Gorilla. Red Gorilla is a Nissan Skyline GTR R34 weighing 112.7 grams. We've got Sir Coco driving in the Lab Rat. Lab Rat is a Volvo V60 weighing 77.1 grams. Ben driving in the Barbarian Baron. The Barbarian Baron is a 2017 Audi RS6 Avant weighing 70.2 grams. And last up is Cody Miller driving in the Peacemaker. It's a Nissan Skyline GTR R32 weighing 92.4 grams. The drivers will compete in four races. The top driver in points moves on. Here we go with race one. Christopher Kampala starting off on the front right in the red skyline. Sir Coco on the front left in the white Volvo. And there they go down the track for the first race. Christopher Kampala with the early lead going to turn one. Ben Giotze behind him in the red Audi. Ben and Coco side by side. It's a close one in the two. Kampala gets sideways. A hard hit there. This race may be coming to an end. Wait, there goes Ben followed by Cody Miller. They got past that blockade. 
And race one will go to Ben, followed by Cody Miller. Not a fast time there, but a win is a win. A great job there by Ben. I don't know how to say his last name. Hey, we're on a first name basis here. We can just call him Ben. What about Ben G? It kind of sounds like you're saying Benji, like the dog. Okay, so Ben all by itself. Ben Solo. Don't even mention that name around me. You know how I feel about episodes seven through nine. Sorry, I just- They don't exist, 2D. Okay. It was all a bad dream. Okay, calm down. Here we go with race two. Sir Coco on the front right in the white Volvo. Cody Miller on the left in the blue skyline. Sir Coco leading around the corner. Cody currently in second. There's some contact there. Cody Miller getting bounced around. Sir Coco taking advantage as he excels down McClyde straight. He's got this when he's all alone. It appears Coco and Cody Miller are the only two drivers left. Sir Coco takes the win with a time of 18.454 seconds. Cody comes in second. Ben gets a DNF. So that will push Cody Miller to the top of the scoreboard. It looks like Ben drove off the road. Let's see a replay of that. You can see right here, Cody Miller hits the side wall. Ben hits his tail, then runs into Christopher Kampala. Then Ben slides around the inside of that corner before driving off road. Then Christopher spins out. Not a good start for him. He has two DNFs in a row with a score of zero. Here we go, race three. Cody Miller on the front right, Ben on the front left. Cody Miller with six points, Ben and Sir Coco tied with five. Here they go, a close race down the first straight. Sir Coco falling behind. It's gonna be Ben first into the open track. Christopher Kampala in second. Ben's looking good right here. He's got a nice gap between him and Christopher. There they go around the final turn, and this race will go to Ben. That'll be a second win with a track time of 17.308 seconds. That is the fastest time so far for the night. Sir Coco upside down on his roof. That will be a second DNF. Let's see the replay of what happened on that turn. Keep your eye on the white Volvo. If you go too high in the bank without enough speed, that's what's gonna happen every time. Ben now has the lead in points, he has 10. Cody Miller second place in points with eight. Both drivers starting on the inside lane, Ben in the front row, Cody Miller in the back. Ben has the advantage here starting in the pole position. Here they go down the first straight, Ben with the lead. Christopher in close second. Ben's starting to pull away with it. Ben wants to win. He does not want to leave anything up to chance here. Christopher trying to close in on him. Here they go down McClyde straight into the last turn. He's got this one in the bag. Yes, he does. This race goes to Ben with a track time of 17.686 seconds. Even more impressive, despite his DNF on race two, Ben won three out of the four races. Nice job by Ben G. Just Ben. Ben. Let's see where that time puts Ben on the qualifying board. That 17-3 time currently puts Ben in seventh place. There's three qualifiers to go, so he's right on the bubble. Keep in mind, drivers who end up eighth through 11th will have to compete in an additional qualifying race to get into the tournament. So that means the Estonian racer will be in that additional qualifying race. Yes, he will. It's King of Mountain Tournament number five, qualifying race nine. Up first is Sam the Candyman driving in Lollipop. Lollipop is a custom 77 Dodge van weighing 69.4 grams. There is something suspicious about that van. I don't see anything suspicious. Free candy? He's a generous man. Well, I'm going to keep an eye on him. Then we have... What the heck is that? It's Snoopy. Are they trying to turn King of the Mountain into a joke? Snoopy is a well-known, loved character. Look at the name. It's driven by Snoop Dogg. Yes, but this one is D-O-G, not D-O-double-G. And the truck name is Poopy Snoopy. Get this guy out of don't here. Don't worry. With the high center of gravity, I don't think he has much of a chance. It's ridiculous. Okay, just read the next one. Now, this is a respectable vehicle right here, driven by the Bailey Boys Racing. It's Baja Bailey. Baja Bailey is a Chrysler Pacifica weighing 69.4 grams. That Snoopy truck should not be allowed to race. Okay, calm down, Charlie Brown. We got one more. Last up is Ted the Tutor driving in Computer Tutor. The Computer Tutor. They really think this is a joke, don't they? It's a cute name. More like a garbage name. Okay, okay. It's a Ford Transit Connect cargo van weighing 67.2 grams. Boy, we are scraping the bottom of the barrel tonight. Come on, they're not that bad. Just look at the screen. Look at your screen right now. Tell me that does not look ridiculous. Yeah, it's kind of like having the Macy's Parade on Race Mountain. This isn't a Parade 3D. This is adult modified die cast racing. This is real stuff. People from around the world modified their cars to send them here to compete to see who is the king of the mountain. And we got people trying to make jokes with Poopy Snoopy. Whoa, we just lost Bailey Boys Racing. Where did they go? And down goes Ted the Tutor. That leaves the Candyman and Snoop Dogg. The Candyman on two wheels. Sam the Candyman recovers, and he will take the win, followed by Snoop Dogg. If Snoopy wins this, I am done. I think he just got lucky this time. Well, I'm cheering for the Candyman. Go, Sam. Bring on the free candy. We need to find out what happened to Bailey Boys Racing in the Chrysler Pacifica. They just disappeared off the track. And there they are behind the garage. How did that even happen? I am not sure. We're going to have to go to the replay. Ted the Tutor also upside down. That's what he gets for being a computer pooter. Actually, it's computer tutor. It doesn't matter what the name is. It's stupid. Here we go with the replay. Bailey Boys Racing was there one second and gone the next. 
There it is from another Whoa. angle. Wow, man. They crashed into the light post, bounced over onto the roof of the garage before falling down to the ground. That's gotta be one of the worst wrecks we've seen in King of the Mountain Tournament number five. Yeah, that was a big one. All right, we got all four drivers back up to the start. Unfortunately, Snoopy is still there. Snoop DOG starting on the front right, Ted the Tutor on the front left. I've never said this about any driver, but I wouldn't mind seeing Snoopy pull McClyde in this race. What? It's ridiculous. We do not wish McClyde's fate on anyone. Race, race McClyde. McClyde. Not the driver, I'm just hoping that dog falls off the back of the truck. We don't wish that on animals it's either. It's not a real dog. Sam the Candyman blocking traffic. He gets a push by Ted the Tutor. Ted wipes out. Down goes the Bailey Boys. Snoop D.O.G. gets stuck. Yes. And that just leaves Sam the Candyman in his creepy van to pass the finish line. There's nothing creepy about a candy man offering free samples. When you're doing it out of a van like that, it is creepy. Don't judge a van by its cover. Judge it by its contents. In this case, it's free candy. It's super suspect. It's not. That's all I'm saying. Well, I for one respect his side hustle. He's out here racing. He's winning at that. And on top of that, he's promoting his business with free candy. The van doesn't even have a company logo. Well, at least he's not racing with a doghouse on the back of a poop brown truck. It's Snoopy. I don't Come care. Come on. Well, that is two wins so far for the Candyman. He has 10 points now. Snoop D.O.G. in second place with three. The Bailey Boys and Ted the Tutor have no idea what the finish line even looks like. Well, that was kind of expected with this wild card group of whatever they are. This time, Bailey Boys racing in the lead. Bailey Boys with the only vehicle that actually looks good. Unfortunately, looks don't win races. They can. Sometimes they can. Bailey Boys looking good. They may actually see the finish line here. Oh, oh. you spoke too soon, 3D. Down goes the Bailey Boys. Ted the Tutor makes the pass. He takes the win, followed by Sam the Candyman. I do not know where Snoop D.O.G. is at. Hopefully he crashed. Yes, he did. There he is, the brown poop truck on its side. Let's take a look at what happened there. A close race between Sam and <laughs> Ted around the corner. Ah, that's what he gets for having that stupid dog on the back of his truck. Joke's on you, Snoopy. Joke's on you. The Bailey boys were doing so well that they flopped on the last corner. Sam the Candyman almost got ran off the road, but he found a way to recover. The Candyman can, 3D. The Candyman can. And that was Ted the Tutor's first time passing the finish line. One race to go, and it's already over. Sam the Candyman, 13 points. Ted the Tutor has five. Snoop Dogg has three. The Candyman will be advancing on. The only thing he may want to do here is improve on that track time. I'm just glad I never have to see that Snoopy Dog on the track ever again. Ooh, we could have a Snoopy-themed race. 3D, don't do it. We could throw in Woodstock. Don't even joke about that. Oh, and look who's over again. Snoop's truck is on its side, causing a traffic jam. That leaves the Candyman all alone on the track to take his third win with an improved time, 17.516 seconds. Way to go, Candyman. I don't know about you, but I'm going to get some free candy. You're just walking off? It says free candy. Yeah, but you have a job here. Come on, it's free candy. Yeah, but we're not done. I'll get you a Snickers. We have to, oh, Snickers. Uh, I'll take a Snickers if he has one. Uh, well, then that was an interesting race to say the least. We are getting down to the final entries that were sent back in 2020. In fact, there's only eight new drivers left. Sam the Candyman qualifies in eighth, so he will have to compete in an additional qualifying race. Oh wait, did they have a Snickers? Bro, not just a Snickers. King size Snickers. Whoa. See, I told you Sam's a good guy. Uh, you said he was suspect. That's all the time we got. Until next time, I'm 3D Botmaker. And I'm 2D. It's King of the Mountain Tournament number five, qualifying race 10. We've got Speed Force driving in Wendigo. Wendigo is a Ford Escort Rally weighing 92.8 grams. I see what he's doing there. We know Stephen King is retired. That's obviously him with a new alias. It could just be a tribute car. He's not fooling me. That's Stephen King. Then we have Emil Seal driving in Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest is an Audi RS5 coupe weighing 74.5 grams. Let's see, it's spring. It's a little early to be celebrating Oktoberfest. Hopefully he's not drinking and racing. Then we have Stephanie Shade driving in Glitter Runner. The Glitter Runner is a 71 Plymouth GTX weighing 78.6 grams. Now that is a beautiful custom paint job. It's certainly got a lot of sparkle and shine. And last up is the Bridge Troll driving in Parabellum. The Bridge Troll is driving in a BMW 2002 weighing 96.9 grams. Well, we don't have any bridges on this track, so I don't know what he's gonna be trolling. Well, he is driving in a BMW, so we may get a taste of the upcoming BMW tournament. I'm gonna guess that he won't be using his blinkers. Well, true, but no one really uses them in a race. Here we go at the start of race one. Speed Force. Stephen King. Starting on the front right in the Ford Escort. That is totally Stephen King, look at that. Wow, he just blasted out the start gate. Stephanie Shea in distant second. 
Here goes King around turn two. I mean, Speed Force around turn two. You had it right the first time. Look at him go. Speed Force rounding the final corner, and race one goes to Speed Force. <laughs> Stephen King. With an impressive track time, 16.636 seconds. That is fast. That is only to be expected from a rally champion like Stephen King. It's Speed Force. The official name it's King. is Speed Force. We all know who it really is. Look right here, Stephen King. I mean, you got me saying it again. Embrace the truth, 3D. We hardly ever see such a big lead going into the first turn. A great start in this race for Speed Force. <coughs> Stephen King. Here we go with race two. This time, Emil Seal out in front with Speed Force on his tail. That was a struggle to get out. Speed Force glued to the back bumper of that Audi. Speed Force trying to pass on the inside, but Emil Seal gets away. A close one there. Emil Seal riding the final turn, and race two will go to Emil Seal. Emil Seal gets a track time of 17.652 seconds. Emil is one point behind Speed Force. Speed Force has eight. Emil has seven. This was a great exchange right here between Speed Force and Emil Seal. Emil Steel able to hold on to that lead and secure the win. What? I can see it in your face. You are struggling so hard not to say Stephen King. Well, yeah, I'm a little thrown off by the livery of the car. Stephen King is a legend on the channel, and anytime we see that car, it's going to be associated with Stephen King. That's because it is Stephen King. This time, Stephanie Shea out in front, followed by Speed Force. Sp what was that? Speed Force right on the tail of Stephanie Shea. It's a close one into two. Steph Shea holding on to the lead. Troll Bridge and Emil Seal are way behind on this one. Here comes Stephanie and Speed Force out of the final turn. And race three goes to Stephanie Shea. Stephanie gets a time of 17.5 seconds. Hey, look who finally decided to show up. A very slow finish here for Emil Seal. I don't know if he blew a gasket or something, but that was a slow finish. That's surprising. He did great on race two. That win will move Stephanie Shea up to second place. She has nine points. Speed Force has 11, so that's a two-point gap between first and second place. Both Stephanie Shea and Speed Force will be starting in the front row on the final race. Stephanie Shea has the inside lane advantage. Yes, but Speed Force has the Stephen King advantage because it's Stephen King. Here we go with race four of four. The top driver in points advances on. Speed Force once again with a big lead down the first straight. Stephanie trying to catch up on the inside of that corner, but Speed Force is gone. All hail the king. It appears there is no stopping that Ford Escort rally. It doesn't matter if it's a rally track or a street course. That right there is a winner. All I gotta say is nice to see the champ out on the track again and actually winning. Go Superman, go. Speed Force advances with a time of 16.636 seconds. That will currently qualify him in second place, guaranteeing him a spot in the tournament. There's one more qualifier left. Then we will have the race off to determine who gets that last eighth place spot. Right now, Ben, Sam the Candyman, and the Estonian Racer will all be in that race off. So there's only two more races before the start of King of the Mountain tournament number five. It's King of the Mountain tournament number five, qualifying race 11. TJ is driving in Soccer Mom. Soccer Mom is a Porsche Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid Sport Turismo weighing 86.5 grams. Then we have Dave Akers driving in the Fantastic Voyage. Fantastic Voyage is a custom 77 Dodge van weighing 69.2 grams. Hefa is driving in Miss Bullet. Miss Bullet is a Nissan Skyline GTR R34 weighing 76 grams. I thought that was Brian's car. Me too. Then we have another imposter that is Sean Titmus in the Stinger, but that is clearly Big Air Dylan's car. Well, Big Air Dylan is driving in a new Evo now, so maybe he sold his old one to Sean Titmus. I don't know about that. The Stinger is a 2008 Lancer Evolution weighing 95.5 grams. Here we go, drivers will compete in four races. The top driver in points will advance on. TJ starting on the front right, Dave Akers on the front left. We have TJ in the lead down the first straight as they go through the first corner. A close group here. They appear to be evenly matched. TJ onto the open track first, followed by Dave Akers. Uh-oh, watch out. Whoa. Oh, there goes La Heffa. La Heffa flips out on turn two. TJ now driving solo all the way to the finish line to take the first win with a track time of 17.730 seconds. Keep in mind the time to beat to guarantee a spot in the tournament is 17.280 seconds. Otherwise, you'll have to compete in another qualifying race. Correct. Let's take another look at what happened to La Heffa. You can see Dave Akers sliding down the track. He gets hit from behind by Sean Titmus. La Hefa getting pushed high on the bank. 
came crashing right down. That's one race down, three to go. La Hefe has a lot of ground to make up here with that DNF. This time we have Dave Akers in the front right, Sean Titmus on the front left. A Dodge van versus an Evo. Quite the combination here. We do get some interesting mixes here on King of the Mountain. Right now, Dave Akers in the lead in that blue custom Dodge van. He calls that thing the Fantastic Voyage. I like that name. I like the paint job. Come along and ride on the Fantastic Voyage. The Fantastic Voyage doing well here. Dave Akers takes the win on race two, followed by TJ. And we only have two drivers down here at the finish. That's going to be five points added to Dave Akers' score, tying him with TJ. And it's going to be a DNF for Sean Titmus and La Heffa. That's two DNFs in a row for La Heffa. I'm afraid to say it may already be over for that skyline. It's pretty hard to come back from two DNFs. Even if they won the next two races, that's 10 points. Both TJ and Dave Akers already have eight. I think at this point, it's going to be one of those two. Well, La Heffa will be starting in the front row on the next two races. Sean Titmus starting race three on the front right in the yellow Evo. La Heffa on the front left in the silver skyline. Well, from the driving here, we can confirm Sean Titmus is not Big Air Dylan in disguise. He just appears to be driving his old car. How much do you think he paid for that thing? With the price of used cars right now, I'd say a small fortune. Sean Titmus leading in race three. No one around him. Dave Baker spun out back there. La Heffa in second. Race three will be Sean Titmus, La Heffa. A close one for third. TJ takes it, followed by Dave Akers. That win for Sean Titmus will keep him in the running. He has seven points. TJ on top with 10. Dave Akers has nine. La Heffa all the way on the bottom with three. You can see right here, they all got bunched up. A lot of paint swapping. That was some great blocking there by Sean Titmus. He got that Evo a little sideways, kept everyone behind him on the corner, and then just took off down McClyde Street. Well, here we go with the final race. TJ has 10, Dave Akers has 9, TJ starting on the front left, La Hefa who has no chance of winning on the front right. Who's going to win and what time will they get? What time do they need again? They need to beat 17.280 seconds to guarantee a spot in the tournament. Hey, look at La Hefa in the lead. Sadly, it's a little too late for this kind of performance by La Hefa who only has 3 points. TJ and Dave Akers battling for second, Dave Akers right on the tail of TJ. La Hefa comes in first, TJ takes second, Dave Akers third. That means TJ will be your winner, but TJ did not beat the time of 17.280 seconds. So that means TJ will have to compete in an additional qualifying race with Ben Giotze, Sam the Candyman, and the Estonian Racer. I am very excited about that race, mostly because Sam the Candyman will be there. It's so nice of him to provide free candy. The way I look at it, regardless of who comes in first next race, we're all winners. Absolutely, we're only one qualifying race away from King of the Mountain tournament number five. Welcome back. It's time for the race off to determine who will get the last spot in King of the Mountain tournament number five. First up is Ben in the Bavarian Baron. It's a 2017 Audi RS6 Avant. Ben set the fastest time out of all the racers here today with 17.308 seconds. Up next is my guy, Sam the Candyman. Driving in, Lollipop. Sam set the second fastest time in his custom 77 Dodge van. I, for one, am hoping Sam goes all the way in this tournament. How can you not love a guy who gives out free candy? Hey, if he's got Reese's, I'm cheering for him too. Then we have the Estonian racer driving in, another, another Evo. Evo. Gee, another Evo. We've had so many. Well, here's another one. The Estonian racer had the third fastest time of this group, 17.560 seconds. Have any other Evos qualified for this tournament? No, not for tournament number five. Well, last up, we have TJ driving in Soccer Mom. The Soccer Mom is a Porsche Panamera Turbo SE Hybrid, yada, yada, yada. It's a car. Hey, hey, show some respect for the Porsche. TJ qualified with a time of 17.730 seconds. All right, here we go. Let's go Sam the Candyman. This is it, the final qualifier for King of the Mountain Tournament number five. The top driver in points will qualify for that last eighth place spot. The track time today will not matter as far as qualifying is concerned. Benji out in front. Come on, Sam, catch up. Benji Otse followed by the Estonian racer in second. Here they go, round turn two. Ben with a nice lead here. That Audi's looking smooth around the corners. They're through the final turn, and Ben Giotse will take the first win, followed by the Estonian racer, Sam the Candyman, and TJ. Well, at least Sam didn't come in last place. There's still three races to go and a lot of candy for him to hand out. Well, that was a great start for Ben Giotse. Yeah, he's looking really good out there. He's smooth and fast in that red Audi. Sam's in the front. This is his chance to shine. Let's see if he can do it. Hey, if anyone can, the Candyman can. And look at that. 
Go, Sam, go! Ben, right on the tail of Sam the Candyman. He's trying to get that free candy. Sam handling this track exceptionally well for being in a van. Look at him go 3D, the Candyman can. Look at this. Here comes Sam the Candyman past yes. the finish line to take the win on race two. All right. And it looks like we lost Ben Giotze. That's what I'm talking about right there, the Candyman making it happen out there on the track. Ben gets stuck on the side of the road so close to the finish line. He's currently in second place as far as the scores but that DNF is going to cost him in the points. Forget about him. Look at Sam the Candyman right here going around that turn, mixing it with love and making the world taste good. I don't know about all that, but it was a strong win for Sam the Candyman. Yeah, but think about it. Who can take a sunrise and sprinkle it with dew? Uh, what are you talking Cover about? Cover it with chocolate and a miracle or two. Okay, you know we have an anti-drug policy for the staff. The Candyman right? Can 3D? Okay, is he giving out edibles? I think all candy is edible, right? This is California, but he's going to need to run that by Susan first. It's just candy 3D. A chocolate-covered miracle does not sound like just Candy. You need to loosen up. Here, try one of these brownies. I am not eating that brownie. And look at this. Oh, we just lost two drivers flipped. Oh, double rollover. Sam the Candyman managed to stay on his tires. The Estonia racer takes the win. That's a fast time to 16 seconds. That is going to be a big boost in points for the Estonian racer. He is now in first place with 10 points. Sam the Candyman in second place with seven. I'm glad to see Sam did not crash that van. Nobody wants a broken Twix. Oh, that's for sure. It appears Ben got sideways and caused that whole crash. He went over first. TJ followed suit. Sam the Candyman stood his ground. And here we are with the fourth and final race. The Estonian racer with 10. Sam the Candyman with seven. The Estonian racer starting in the front right. Sam the Candyman in the back left. Oh man, 3D, we're going to need a chocolate miracle here if Sam the Candyman is going to make it through. Keep your Twizzlers crossed here, 2D. Come on, Sam. The Estonian racer out in front, followed by Ben. Sam the Candyman not far behind in third. The Estonian racer now pulling way ahead. Oh, this is not good. And here comes the Estonian racer to take the win. And another Evo will be joining King of the Mountain tournament number five. Well, it's a sad day for candy lovers around the world, but credit goes to the Estonian racer. A great race. I'm looking forward to seeing him get absolutely crushed in the tournament. Well, it is finally tournament time. Here is the official bracket. On the left side, we have Frank Klein, Golf Reynard, Speedzilla, and the Estonian Racer. On the right, we have Speed Force, The Max Man, League of Speed, and TL Jr. Speedzilla, Speed Force, and League of Speed. That's a lot of speed in this tournament. The winner of the tournament will get a title match against the King of the Mountain, Terrence Jr. Terrence Jr. is the man. He has already defended his title once. If he can do it again, he will be the undisputed King, King of, of the, the Mountain. Mountain.